Um, awesome. There is a new patch this week. It is patch 12.5. We'll run it down real quick. Uh, first up is Ari. She is getting some nerfs. W base damage is decreased. Mana cost is increased. And the E mana cost is increased. Pretty good, considering she's probably the best mid laner in the game right now. People don't think she's that strong, man. I think she's really, really good. It's more the fact that she kind of just does everything well. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, she... I, don't, I, I don't think like she really excels at anything. Um, except, I, I, I accept it like getting picks. Uh, yeah. But, like her wave clear is probably mm -hmm. one of the safest in the game. Like it's just, it's just like man, I, I don't feel like bad like losing to an RR. I'm not mad that she's like picked all the time is like the best mid laner. But like yeah, she's obviously the best mid laner, but it doesn't feel as oppressive. So. It's, it's weird. Yeah, and I, I feel like Ari's one of the characters that, like, when you lose to her and she's doing well, it's hard to blame just the character for being strong. It's like, they still need to be doing it well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where, yeah. like, there, there are, I think, a lot of other characters who are just like, well, you're just winning because that character's broken. Like, you're not playing them yeah. well. Um, For me, the, the most annoying thing about Ari, which I don't know why they still haven't done anything, is, like, her W... Or at least the last time I checked, like procs electrocute on its own. Like it counts as separate instances of damage. So that's always been like the most annoying thing for me about Ari is that she'll like W auto you once and get the electrocute proc, and like even hmm. if she misses EQ, you lose the trade. Yeah, hmm. I, I don't I'm know. Not sure, I, but I, yeah, I don't I, know if they fixed that like a, a when they did the like electrocute changes a long time ago. Like that made it so Morgana couldn't proc it off a single ability. Um. But That's I don't interesting. Know. That might be the case. We'll have to see. Mm -hmm. um, next yeah. is Gwen, though, whose passive damage against monsters is decreased, and her E bonus attack range is decreased. The bonus attack range is actually a pretty big nerf, because yeah. that's what makes her level 1 really strong. She's a character who has a really strong level 1, pretty strong level 2, and then she kind of falls off a cliff until she's like 2 items. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like this is a huge nerf to her overall. That being said, in competitive play, she can be flexed 4 roll, or I guess 3 rolls. Um like mid top and jungle so this is probably going to be a decent nerf for pro play yeah i um i it, it kind of sucks because it feels like she she like just became like playable again almost mm -hmm. um but she's definitely way too strong so good changes yep mm -hmm. uh canon w full stack now uh the bonus damage is increased so when you have your fully stacked w proc it deals like 10 more damage it looks like i think so yeah uh, and a 15, little bit yeah. oh 10 percent more ap yeah 15 flat damage plus they've added to the ratio okay so pretty it's nice extra little, hmm. little on hit poke for kennen yeah uh master yi these changes are really weird q damage and bonus crit damage is decreased each mark now applies on hit effects on hit cooldown reduction now scales with ability haste E and ultimate now pause during his Q, and both can be activated during the Q. E base damage is decreased decreased late. The craziest thing is that you, so you hear um his that his uh Q uh, like reset uh now scales the ability haste, but it scales the other way with ability haste, which is the first ability I think in League of Legends that works that way. The more ability haste that you have, the less that his auto attacks reduces Q cooldown. And I, I, I was giving it some thought after you posted in the Discord, but like that's probably a good thing, right? So you can't stack like yes. a lot of attack speed and cooldown reduction. That's the oh, idea, I'm right? Sorry. Like yeah. I understand yeah. the purpose, but it feels just ass yeah. backward. Just building it ability does. haste and having your ability Increase. get reduced well, less. Yeah, yeah, not increasing cooldown, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's very strange. Mm -hmm. um, it, it seems like a really sloppy fix to that <laughs> problem, where they they like they could just make it longer and just have it be a flat amount or like have that ability not scale with haste. Like having the, the on hit get worse as your haste goes up just seems so like, like a, you know, like a weird band aid fix yeah. like they always fucking do. But I, mean, the, I, I guess hopefully it solves the problem of him like perpetually being an alpha strike. Yeah. yeah, you're probably not going to notice like many changes, to be honest. Yeah, the biggest thing is they're trying to remove the Duskblade build. Um, Good. They probably will push them more towards on hit builds rather than like um, crit builds and stuff like or lethality builds, which is probably interesting. Um, I heard I saw a clip on Reddit from LS talking about that he thinks that um, Laney might become better with changes like this. Mm. Um, the only other thing I've I, I'm really interested in is 
does Q cooldown go on cooldown as soon as you use it or after like he teleports back? Like after he does the hit? Because is there any way you could do a Navori quick blade cheese now that his Q procs Ooh. three on hits? Meaning you could get three on hits reducing your cool Q cooldown using your Q? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I mean, you probably can't. Like, let's be honest. It's probably, or if you can, it'll probably be for a day or two before they patch that. I mean, you'd have to have like really high crit chance already to actually have them. Yeah. Because you need to crit on them. There's three, I think, auto attacks when you Q. It like hits three mm -hmm. targets. So like the most you can reduce it is 20%, 20%, 20%, which are remaining cooldown. So it's like only probably like what, 40% total, honestly. Yeah. Um, I feel like but, it's not that OP if it that even is the case. So it it would be, per, it would be like his pat. So it would be Master Yi's passive cooldown plus the Navori cooldown as well. Oh, because his Q is also proccy. Yeah. Yeah. Plus the, uh, I guess yeah. Plus the, those two things together. So I don't know. Maybe. I feel like huh. they they probably like, uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna eat my words on this. They probably <laughs> know about this interaction and would have like, I don't know prevented it before it happens or right the more likely thing oh, yeah that's what i said on the discord I'm like <laughs> right like th could this happen right um no but um like i guess the only thing to note is that the reality is it probably just goes on cooldown after the hits anyways yeah. I'm, I'm not sure but that's how i would assume it interacts if it doesn't though uh try this cheese build day one because it might be cool <laughs> i mean uh, point being it's it's probably still really good yeah like navori is a good item on him because like e even if your alpha strike doesn't do it if you get a kill and then auto attack once, it's back up. Yeah. So and you're reducing your other uh, cooldowns. Um, yeah, exactly. While you're queuing now, which is important. Like even if you're not reducing the Q cooldown, you're reducing the E and your W cooldown when you're mm -hmm. in Navori. So or when yeah. you're in Q. But uh, it's cool. Uh, good changes. Yeah. Next is Misfortune, whose W passive movement speed on respawn is increased. Um, though she just spawns with the maximum movement speed rather than like uh like build slowly up. scaling up to it that's cool interesting that's, that's yeah. actually kind of a nice buff to this fortune yeah i mean it makes it so you don't have to press w as soon as you spawn yeah so that's cool up awesome. next we've got samira health growth and armor growth are increased the cooldown on her ultimate is decreased i don't know yeah. what it's going to take to bring this character back to like <laughs> she's back to the seeing play forefront. top lane that's the only role she's seeing play though yeah i was i, I don't know if she'll ever be in the bot lane again um but hey she seems really fun in, in a solo lane yeah she just doesn't um, fucking do anything in like <laughs> yeah yeah she doesn't she's too low range her q is actually like one of the most pitiful abilities in the game before you start to get like items and levels in it it's like a really shitty ezreal q that does less, less damage, damage is slower and, and is <laughs> yeah <laughs> And it costs mana. <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. Seraphine changes. W mana cost is decreased later. The cooldown is increased early, but decreased late. The shield is decreased and now scales with rank. Ally shields now equal to Seraphine's. Uh, the heal scaling is adjusted and the E cooldown is decreased early. <laughs> so just hop it's in seems... here. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, so we talked ahead. about it last week that we're like, oh, mid Seraphine's good again, right? Um, all these changes are to make her better bottom yeah. lane. <laughs> and yeah. also it's funny because mm -hmm. it says Seraphine's been enjoying the mid uh, lane limelight. She has a 0.5% pick rate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> one thing I can say, I did uh, play Seraphine Karma bot lane with karma Ugh. i was playing karma as like the the carry mm -hmm. dude it, it is like it's very yucky because it's double enchanter but holy shit is that a strong lane no i have i have like long since thought and i, I think i've said this on the show like seraphine plus enchanter is like such a busted oh, yeah. broken combo yeah i think i think honestly karma is probably the best pair with it because yeah. you can like you can actually bully people more than like any other enchanter yeah I, I think it really depends on what you want to do i guess if you like if you're if your goal is to like survive lane or or even win lane probably karma just because that's her, the role she plays but like if, if you want to get to like late game team fights uh, it, it sounds like mimi as fuck but seraphine sona is like absolutely mm -hmm. disgusting because you both yeah. scale super oh, hard yeah like Sona has such a low cooldown shield to then proc your heal so you can use empowered other abilities so you don't have to use you know use your empowered mm -hmm. ability on your heal. It's uh, yeah yeah I think I think for like late game team fights they're better but yeah yeah, like, yeah it, it, the it just depends on laning power of Seraphine mm -hmm. Karma. You bully the shit out of like anything. You shield out any damage they have for you. You've got like 
you know, double to triple hard CC. It's it's wild. Yeah, I mean, I it's, play it's more of that. Yeah, it's really gross. I, if you haven't played it, um, you should play Seraphine. I know you played the Karma, but Seraphine Ash is one of my favorite, like more traditional lanes. Um, just because as soon as Ash auto attacks, your E stuns. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh it's pretty crazy. Mm. Cool. Um next is Zin Zhao. His E cooldown is increased and his R invulnerability duration is decreased. Um the bigger change is the R duration. Um mm. yeah. that's a big Good. uh problem <laughs> in League of Legends right now is that you can't do damage to a lot of the meta characters. And not because like they're too tanky or whatever. It's because yeah. you just can't target them. Zin Zhao is the one of the biggest fenders because he just Gwen. jumps in, uses his ult. You can't hit him. Gwen, uh, she's in her thing. You can't hit her when you're outside of her thing. Um, Any uh, Kiana, user. Kiana, like, because there's the famous, there's the fucking Vigar V2 clip, the analyst for Cloud9, where he's 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 like a really high elo Vigar one trick, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's this clip where he's in the jungle tr like three v wanting like well it's like a team fight but like he's obviously playing Vigar and there's a Kiana a Gwen and a Zin Zhao and he <laughs> can't hit Zin because Zin's ult's on he can't hit Kiana because she triple bush combos and he can't hit uh uh Gwen because she's in her fucking W and it's like immune. <laughs> it, it's just like that's that's so frustrating that like these characters have their own ways of like invulnerability and uh, it, I don't know you you can't do damage like, if that do shit like that in the game yeah and, and like I, I feel like they're like longer and not as skillful as a lot yeah. of the other ones that is, have existed like right Xin Zhao ulti feels shitty to play against yeah Fizz E feels shitty sometimes but yeah. like you don't right like he has to actually use it well yeah like, he, can, use, he, he has to hold it and like use it for stuff or Zin yeah at the very least he can he can trade it for like that. That's his primary damage source. Yeah, you know, outside of his ult. That that too. Yeah, it's like it's a it's a big damage it, source and cooldown for him and like. And I I think like in a vacuum like these characters are are fine by themselves like mm -hmm. w when they're you know when it's just ends out yeah it's a little frustrating but it's not necessarily like super broken but then you start to like combo them together where we see like Zin Zhao plus Gwen and like okay they're so their entire front line is just invulnerable yep. like what am I supposed to do you know I mean, it's um, the same thing with like like that any mechanic right like zillion alt isn't an issue in League of Legends but zillion alt plus or not a W plus yeah. two five years down the road when there's two or three more revives like is it a problem when there's five characters on a team that can revive probably right mm-hmm mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's also a thing where it's just like it's it's an all or nothing right now yeah. where you don't take damage from the outside as like Xin Zhao or Gwen where they could just make it like you take, you know, 20% damage. Yeah. Right, or like you take reduced CC effectiveness. Because it's yeah, not like you could just walk past those characters. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and especially like, the, you know, there are weird fringe cases where like because one or both of the, the parties like moved or displaced or flashed or something where it's like something that should have hit didn't because now it's too they're too far away from each other mm -hmm. and that that feels terrible yeah. it's also just like what are you supposed to do against those characters i guess you wait out Zin Zhao's five second alt or you wait out mm -hmm. uh gwen's whatever thing but like at least kiana like you can like she's a squishy character at the very least. Like if there's a fed Zin Zhao, your only option to kill him is get into his face. <laughs> like, is to be melee range with the fed character. Yeah, like I don't know who's it, building Gore Drinker, by the way. Yeah, it's a so. very weird like issue, but I, I I'm glad they're nerfing a little bit. Honestly, it probably yeah. could be a three second ult. I don't think there's any issues with that, but we'll get there eventually. Yeah, or or they could like do something where it's just like, hey, it, it you get another you know second of it if you kill your challenged target. Yeah right well, like, it could, yeah it could, it could even be like yeah it's you get an extra second when you kill a challenge target or it starts out like as a big aoe and that slowly gets smaller over the duration like of the wind mm -hmm. wall sort of thing um mm -hmm. so well, like range characters I, can I, actually fight a couple seconds in it would be i was gonna say around. yeah i think it actually they'd have to get bigger, yeah that makes yeah sorry i was trying to yeah that would make sense say, that's a massive buff <laughs> dude <it gets> <laughs> you have to fight him like literally face to face <laughs> yeah, yeah. only, only one person at a time because no one else can get close enough yeah, yeah. Uh, either way like there's definitely ways to fix it i, yeah, I definitely yeah. think this is a weird ability though um yeah. this is the thing i want to talk about the most though really quick though is hallbreaker because i think they're Ugh. doing some they're making some poor changes so hallbreaker is absolutely op um 
I think I'm going to title this episode something related to Hullbreaker because I want to talk about this for a minute. Um, so Hullbreaker is built on pretty well every top laner of the game. If you're a character that doesn't build yep. Hullbreaker, you shouldn't be playing that character right now. Um, Hullbreaker is 116% gold efficient without anyone, without the uh, passive bonus, and it's up to 200% uh, efficient when you have the I'm hunting alone uh, passive bonus. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not, not factoring counting minion buff stats. Not, yeah, counting minion because buff that, stats. That's impossible is, to quantify. Because you can't calculate it, yeah. But, yeah. It, it, which but is, there is more value there. Oh, I can calculate it in my fucking head, though, when I take 15 autos to <laughs> yeah. kill a fucking super minion that has like, yeah. the buff yeah. or whatever. Uh, so either way, they're nerfing it, but they're only nerfing it for ranged characters. Ugh. Which, so this is this is a nerf to Graves and Urgot, and that's about Graves it. Graves and Urgot are the two yeah. biggest ranged characters. I guess users. action. Yeah, he's so, sometimes yeah, there's, built There's more, and it's... It's wild because like you can shoehorn this into any character because it's yeah. so good now. Like I've seen a Collie's building it. Like you can put it on anything, even if it probably shouldn't work on your yeah. character. Um, and again, great they they have its well the the bonus the bonus armor and magic resist is halved for ranged characters. And then the, the super minion buff is halved, but like the stats are still ridiculously good. And yeah. It's, I, I don't know, man. Like I just, think I, I agree. Like... It's better to make it good on melee and not yeah. so much on range, but it's still too good. Yeah. It, it should, it should be stronger on melee than range. I think that's fair. Cause yeah, like Nars graves or got all do abuse it too much. And then they're safe with the range and safe with their buffs and stuff. Right. That's fair. Mm-hmm. That being said, the issue is that it's gold efficient when you're not fucking using the item, you can build this yeah. item, the split push item and then go team fight. And it's more gold efficient than most people's items in the team fight, which mm-hmm. is it's yeah, just, that's, that's, that's crazy. The like yeah. I, I don't know. Like you can build this character, this item on like any character. I build it on Tom Kench, by the way. Sometimes when the other uh, player builds it, I just like match yeah. it, sort of thing. Because I, I feel like you have to. You can't yeah. not build this item. Like it's so crazy. Yeah, and especially like for a melee for a ranged character who has it, I think like part of why it is so problematic mm-hmm. is the buff to the the minions. Like right, the super minion is like not only does it now take you fifteen auto attacks to kill that super minion. But that's 15 auto attacks that you have to step up and try and avoid getting chipped down by the yeah. ranged character, right? It's like, I have to I have to sit here and auto it 15 times while a Nar is throwing boomerangs at me. Yeah. Or like while an Urgot is poking me down. And like, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, like I've been playing a decent amount of Fallbreaker top where I just go fucking lethal tempo trundle and never interact with my team. Yep. And, like, I, I think that the item should be strong if you're doing that, right? Like, it, it's fine if it's strong to do that. It shouldn't be good in team fights when you're not. Yeah. Um, but, like... I, I don't know. I think it's just such a poor, like, addition to the game. I personally don't want to see split pushing be, like, a, a like, viable way to play most games, I think. Uh, if, if you want to, like, bring it out for some, I think that's okay. But I, I don't know the fact that you could just draft these characters and then essentially turn top lane into a, a lane that doesn't exist in the game. Like I, I don't know, it feels it feels very lame to me uh, nah, and frustrating that's... to play and play against. I and, and this is someone like I've played it like a lot of it on my Smurf. It is it's it's easy. It's broken. And at the Elo that I was playing at, I think like mid to high gold. I, I think there was one game where my lane opponent built it and I also built it. Yeah. So like yeah. I, I don't know it was just it, it it just became okay you don't like I I have two items to your one item essentially so good luck <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's wild and again like using it on Trundle because he's already such a good yeah. power pusher like I I think I was averaging like sixteen thousand damage to structures a game yeah and and like if I ever had a free split where like they were fighting a dragon like easy two three towers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it's, it's really disgusting and it, i think it's especially broken on characters who can who have like sheen in their natural build path as well yeah no for sure especially sheen, trinity yeah. force sheen yeah, yeah. I, I definitely like insane. i don't mind slow pushing i really don't think it's like that bad of a thing for the game i just hate 
when it's so good that like your role becomes I have to baby split their uh, babysit their split pusher. Like that's when it like it becomes like less fun. It's like oh I'm doing really well this game, but they have a split pusher yeah. like whether it's inting Scion Trundle whatever. So all I have to do is make sure that I clear waves in the lane that lane that they're in so that they can't just take towers. Like mm-hmm. that that I don't know. It feels like you're just playing thirty minutes of just clearing minions at that point. And I don't know. League yeah, Legends is supposed I mean, to be fun, it, and you're trolling if you're not stopping them from doing that. I, I want tr- like split pushing to be viable, but yeah. I don't want it to be in every game. And yeah, right. Like it's, if if I'm not playing split push, I don't want to be guaranteed that I just have to spend all game dealing with another split pusher. Yeah, um, I, I guess I guess when I say like I I don't want it to like I don't want it to be like the ideal way to play the game. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah because because then be I then and I and I don't want that to be because of items. Because I, I think then we start to get into like, okay, so everyone just builds easier out portal or okay, everyone just build Hallbreaker because it's the most efficient item in the game. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't feel like in the spirit of League to me, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah I, I, I'm with you. <laughs> there's this one guy who's like a high diamond Ziggs one trick and he only plays split push oh Ziggs. God. Um, and it's just, dude, it's like, it's bad. Like, it's not good. He would do better. He's a good enough Ziggs player. He'd just do better mm-hmm. if he didn't play just split push Ziggs. But he only splits, like, side lanes. And it's the most frustrating thing in the game to play against. Because it's, like, if you ever fuck up and he does split push a wave, he just, like, gets a full tower every single yeah. time. And it's, like, God, dude, split pushing makes me want to die. <laughs> yeah. But anyways. Yeah. Uh, and and I think that there's also, like, the aspect of... It, it feels so much more okay if the split pusher like won the what the duel yeah and then takes mm-hmm. a tower because like the, he beat your thing versus like your top laner tried to gank bottom and because he wasn't top for 20 seconds i took two towers yeah like that feels terrible mm-hmm. for sure anyway that's i think <laughs> it for the patch they did some vfx updates for elise they no more They're working shot. on mythic content stuff Frailure Clash is on its way. They're doing some border things where you can adjust which border you're showing. Bug fixes as always. And then we've got the the B skins. We've got um, the Colton patch. Hell yeah. <laughs> we've got B Ziggs, Heimer Stinger, Nunu and B Lump, and Orbiana. Hell yeah. <laughs> God, Kennedy came up with the best fucking skin. Because like, oh, there's tons of like, uh, ideas for these or like the mm-hmm. fake leaks, the notepad leaks, so, like people saying Fiddle Stinger was going to be one of the uh, like Ooh. things and stuff like that. The best one that I didn't ever see, and Kennedy came up with this, I swear to God, I've never seen anyone else come up with this, is a BB Trox. BB <laughs> Trox. <laughs> Dude, it's so good. I love that. Oh, love it's that. actually just so fucking good. It's actually just way more clever yeah. than all of these. <laughs> yeah. That's funny yeah awesome um oh did you i guess there's a little bit more new news <laughs> oh yeah i just wanted to like quickly touch on it not like it's like super important um but oh, so i guess the like, one thing is first of all riot's taking their yearly like break so there isn't going to be another patch until march 30th so there's no patch for four weeks now which is a long time Oof. 